Speaker, I rise today to advise honourable members of the completion of the audit of the, financial, of the Consolidated Fund financial statements for the year ended 31st of March of 2020, uh, which will be tabled in the South Federal House henceforth. Uh, as honourable members are aware, the Consolidated Fund is the general operating fund of the Bermuda government, and is the fund through which government conducts the majority of its transactions. Consolidated Fund financial statements report the financial position operations, change in net debt and cash flows resulting from the activities of the government. This includes the accounts of the Senate, the House of Assembly, all government departments and offices, and all courts. Mr. Speaker, I'm disappointed to report that the Auditor General gave a qualified audit opinion on the 2019-2020 annual accounts of the Consolidated Fund of the Government. Consolidated Fund previously received unqualified opinions for the years 2013 through 2017. The items that precipitated the 2018 qualified opinion were rectified, resulting in a return to clean opinion for the 2019 audit. The basis of the qualified audit opinion is as follows. Inventory departments within the Ministry of Public Works were unable to perform the physical inventory count at year-end due to the constraints of COVID-19 and associated shelter in place and were unable to perform a determination of the slow moving and obsolete items. The Department of Marine and Ports were unable to provide support for their physical inventory results. There was also no related provision for obsolescence for this department's inventory balance. And the auditors were not able to satisfy themselves of these inventory balances using alternate procedures. Mr. Speaker, regarding the Auditor General's inventory qualification, honorable members are advised that the approximately $6 million in inventory, in the view of the Ministry of Finance, does not cause the audited financial statements to be misleading. Mr. Speaker, under the Audit Act 1990, Section 61B, the Auditor General is able to include in her report any comments she considers appropriate. Accordingly, the Auditor General has, for the 10th consecutive year, included an other information section on matters she deems appropriate. For the 2020 report, she has also included an emphasis on matter section. The other information relates to the following. Public debt and guarantees, the Auditor General has highlighted that while the government is within the legislative limit of $2.9 billion, there is a further $952 million in guarantees to various lenders by the Consolidated Fund. Um, two, increasing net debt. The Auditor General has noted that net debt, as calculated on the statement of change in net debt, increased by $329 million and continues to grow. And this can be found on page 8 of the financial statements. And her third point is usefulness of the financial statements. The Auditor General explains that the usefulness of the financial statements is limited because they are not summary financial statements. In other words, they do not represent the combined financial position and activities of all government entities, only the consolidated fund. It is important to note that these explanatory paragraphs do not alter the Auditor General's opinion that the financial statements are presented fairly except for the matters described in basis for qualified opinion, but are highlighted matters. However, Mr. Speaker, the government shares the auditor's concerns in these areas and has already begun to tackle these matters. For instance, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Finance has already put in place a plan to eliminate the deficit and ultimately reduce the debt. Efforts to address uh, this in fiscal 2020-2021 were severely hampered by the challenges related to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, as noted in the Economic Recovery Plan, which was presented to this Honorable House earlier this week, the government's commitment to management of fiscal and economic matters in a fiscally prudent manner remains resolute. Further, as noted in the 2021-2022 budget statement and highlighted as part of that plan, government has put in place fiscal guardrails to be adhered to which, among other things, focused on addressing the deficit and the level of debt. Mr. Speaker, liabilities related to pension and other employee future benefits are included in the net debt amount disclosed in the financial statements. 
and the government has already started the review of these benefits to, assure, to ensure their sustainability. Mr. Speaker, in relation to guarantees of the Consolidated Fund to various lenders, it is important to clarify that the majority of the guarantees are related to debt taken out by public authorities. Mr. Speaker, guarantees are contingent liabilities to the government and are not included on the government's balance sheet or counted against the debt ceiling unless the guarantee becomes due and payable by the government. All guarantees are disclosed in notes to the financial statements of the Consolidated Fund and the annual budget. Mr. Speaker, with regard to the preparation of the summary financial statements for the Bermuda government, the Ministry agrees there are benefits to issuing consolidated financial statements. However, honourable members are advised that a key factor in this regard would be ensuring that there are current financial statements for all public authorities. The emphasis of matter contains a paragraph highlighting the uncertainties related to the COVID-19 pandemic. It also provides commentary on the valuation related to the Morgan's Point Caroline Bay project. In that regard, the note explains that due to the high level of uncertainty associated with recovering the cost relating to the assets of Georgia's Bay Limited, a valuation allowance of $183.3 million was recognized and the net carrying value of $1,000 included in the statement of financial position. The audit report is dated 9 December 2020. In 2019, it was 19th of November. Certain private debt placements made by the government contain a reporting covenant requiring delivery of the audited financial statements within 240 days of the fiscal year end, which would be the 26th of November 2020. Honorable members are advised that while this reporting covenant was not met, the government was given had given prior approval by the lenders to extend the delivery date to the 26th of January 2021. A detailed discussion of the highlights of the consolidated financial statements can be found in the financial statement analysis and discussion, which is included with the audited statements. Speaker, a few of the financial highlights of the 2020 consolidated fund statements are as follows. Net public debt, which excludes guarantees, and his net of government borrowing sinking fund increased by $184.9 million during fiscal 2019-2020, standing at $2.646 billion at the year end compared to $2.419 billion in 2019. This represents an increase of 8% from 2019. In September 2019, the government entered into a credit facility with Butterfield and HSBC Bermuda for $200 million. The proceeds were used to purchase the lender's rights and interest under the Morgan Point Caroline Bay Guarantee. And the 2020 sinking fund balance was $41.3 million compared to $218.9 million in 2019, as $180 million of senior notes matured and were paid off during the fiscal year. Speaker, total revenue raised by the Consolidated Fund for fiscal 2019-2020 was approximately 1.09 billion, representing a decrease of 14.1 million, or 1.3 percent, in fiscal 2018-2019 total revenue of 1.1 billion. This is a 32.1 million dollar below the original budget estimate. The most significant generators of revenue for fiscal 2019-2020: payroll taxes, accounting for 465 million dollars, or 42.8 percent of total revenue. In 2019, that number was $467.5 million, or 42.7%, and customs duties accounting for $221.9 million, or 20.4%, versus in 2019, $226.1 million, or 20.7%. Current expenses for fiscal 2019-2020 were $1.392 billion, versus 2019, $1.187 billion, Four largest components of current expenses were employee costs, grants and contributions, the Morgan's Point Caroline Bay Valuation Allowance, and interest on debt. Total employee costs were $558.5 million, or 40.1 percent, versus 2019, $550.1 million, or 46.3 percent of total expenses. Included in this amount is $78.1 million 
non-cash retirement benefit expenses versus 78.52 in 2019. Grants and contributions for 323.9 million or 23.3 percent versus 2019 319 million, 319.2 million or 26.9 percent. Interest on debt was 120.5 million or 8.7 percent versus 2019 of 124 million or 10.4 percent. The Morgan's Point Caroline Bay Valuation Allowance totaled 183.3 million and was deemed appropriate due to the significant measurement of uncertainty in the valuation of amounts expected to be ultimately recovered by the government. Total current expenditure on a modified cash basis was $1.05 billion versus 2019 $1.11 billion, which was $5.44 million more than the adjusted budget for 2018-19, or $7.9 billion less. Speaker. Total capital account cash expenditure was $67.1 million, which was $2.4 million higher than the original budget estimates. Total capital and current account cash expenditures for 2019-20 was $1.119 million, which was $7.8 million, or 7 tenths of 1% higher than the original budget estimate of $1.111 billion. Mr. Speaker, the all-inclusive results from the government's operations, both capital and current, on an accounting accrual basis for the year ending the 31st of March 2020, was a deficit of 346.2 million, 222.8 million higher than the prior year's deficit of 123.3. This is due primarily to the valuation allowance for the Caroline Bay project and the first time provision for doubtful collections of amounts owed to the consolidated fund by other public sector funds or organizations. If we remove the non-appropriated expenses and the non-recurring items related to the Caroline Bay project, the modified cash basis, all-inclusive results for government operations, the same basis used in the budget book, is a deficit of $32.5 million. Original estimates forecasted a budget surplus of $7.4 million. Therefore, the actual deficit was up by $40.7 million when compared to the original estimate. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the Auditor General and her team, the persons in the Accountant General's Department, and those in other ministries who were involved in ensuring a successful audit. <coughs> These statements provide valuable information on the financial position of the government, and I would encourage the public to examine these statements. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.